Hi, everybody. I'm Jim Stavridis, the dean at the Fletcher School of Law and Diplomacy at Tufts University. It's January. There's snow everywhere outside, and it's a good time to build a fire and read a book. <music> So let me tell you about two great book things happening around the Fletcher School right now. First is a continuation of our program called Fletcher Reads. This is something I've been very excited about. Twice a year, we buy enough copies of a terrific book, one novel, one nonfiction, and we give them to the students. And then we bring the author to the Fletcher School to talk about his or her book. So the book that we're doing now is this. It's called 11 Days by Leah Carpenter. And the book talk during which Leah will actually come to the Fletcher School will be on the 9th of February. It's a very powerful story of a mother who over 11 days has to deal with the fact that her son is missing in action in Afghanistan. Powerful story and with a lot of twists and turns. So that's the first book project. The second thing I'd like to talk about is some wonderful books that I've had a chance to read over the last year. Every year I kind of talk about five or six books that I think help explain the world. So I'll hit you with these ideas, but really what I'd like is your feedback on other books that you could share with me, that I could share with our students that help you understand the world. So the first book on my list is called The Cartel. It's by Don Winslow and it's set in northern Mexico. It's the story of the drug cartels at the height of the violence there several years ago. If you ever read The Godfather by Mario Puzo, this is an examination of the drug cartels in that context, how these interwoven families and rivalries drive a horrific criminal business. So to understand that part of the world, I highly recommend The Cartel by Don Winslow. Second book, very different part of the world, is called The Sympathizer. It's by Viet Nguyen, a Vietnamese writer, and it's set in the final days of the U.S. Uh, misadventure in Vietnam. It begins as Saigon Falls and then follows the Vietnamese community as they come to the United States, as they escape from a burning Saigon. It's a powerful novel about rebirth, rebuilding, and the challenges of Southeast Asia. Well, a third book that I really loved is a history, and it's nonfiction. It's by one of my favorite writers, Eric Larson. You might have read his book, uh, In the Garden of Beasts, uh, about Nazi Germany, or about the World's Fair in Chicago, which was called The Devil in the White City. He has a new book out, set a century ago, uh, about the sinking of the Lusitania and the way that it pulled the United States into the First World War. It's called Dead Wake, like the wake of a ship. And it's the story of that sinking in 1915. Very powerful book about Europe, uh, about the United States, about the transatlantic relationship, about ships at sea. Very, very powerfully written nonfiction book. Fourth book, wonderful nonfiction book by Robert Kaplan, uh, who you've heard of before. We had him here in the Fletcher Reads series doing his book, The Revenge of Geography. This book is called Asia's Cauldron, like a witch's pot, a cauldron. And his theory is that the South China Sea is like a bubbling pot, a very dangerous area with China, uh, South Korea, the Philippines, Vietnam, all interacting in this very confined and tight geopolitical space. Asia's Cauldron by Robert Kaplan, really terrific. So a fifth book is another novel, and it's called Green on Blue by Elliot Ackerman, who is a graduate of the Fletcher School, was our writer in residence for a year, and it's a book about Elliot's experiences in Afghanistan at the height of that war. It's powerful. I've compared it in the blurb I did on the back uh, to the writing of Ernest Hemingway. Uh, Elliot is a young writer from whom we will hear a great deal over the decades to come. So the last book on my list this year of books that help me understand the world 
is kind of an outlier in a certain sense, but it's a beautifully written nonfiction book. It's called H is for Hawk. H is for Hawk. It's by a woman named Helen McDonald. And the book is about how she deals with grieving, about the loss of her father. It's set in England in contemporary times. It's not a novel. It's nonfiction. And the way she deals with her grief is to become a falconress, to go out and train, um, in this case, a hawk uh, to pursue as a bird of prey. And it's a very powerful, quirky memoir of dealing with grief. But it's also very much a novel of England. And as we look into this year that's coming up uh, and the potential for Great Britain and its exit from the European Union or not, it's a good time to try and understand the British mentality. This is a book that unpackages that, I think, in very powerful, real strokes. It's also by far the best written book of the year for me. So those are my half a dozen great books that I enjoyed that helped me understand the world in 2015. I'd love to hear from you about your ideas of great books, and I would especially be thrilled to see you part of our book discussion on the 9th of February when we'll be talking about 11 days. Happy reading. All the best from the Fletcher School.